Today I'll be talking about episodes 49 through 51 of Bree's Royal Up. Imperial concubine Shu gets pregnant. Just a quick reminder, Shu was the girl brought in by the Empress Dowager, which is why the Emperor was giving her medicine that she thought was helping her conceive, but was actually a contraceptive. Hence, his super awkward reaction to the news. Shu had stopped taking the meds because she'd given up hope of having a baby. Ironically, this is the result. The Emperor promotes her to consort on the spot. Probably guilty. He is suspicious that she stopped taking the medicine. Could she really have just given up? Was it really just a coincidence? Or did she realize what was up with the meds? Still, considering it fate, the Emperor decides not to intervene and let her have the baby. Yin Wan laments that she's been taking the same drugs Shu has but hasn't been able to get pregnant, and Ri drops a hint. I truly think this is one of the worst decisions Ri or anyone has ever made, and to this day I don't understand it. On what planet is Yen Wan having a child a good idea? Why would you say this? You know Yen Wan well enough to know that she's not a good person. It's so stupid to help her get pregnant. Literally the only thing I can think of to excuse this is that she sympathizes with her pregnancy plight since she's gone through the same thing, but even that's not a good enough reason, Ri. Anyway, taking the hint, Yen Wan investigates and finds out the truth that she's been drinking a contraceptive. Now this I really can't understand. I just... Do you have amnesia? Girl, why do you think she told you to stop drinking it? If she wanted to stop you from having children, wouldn't she have just kept her mouth shut? What kind of mental gymnastics do you have to do to come to the conclusion that Ri is at all to blame for this? This drama has such great writing, but back to back, these two scenes are just... Mm. The Emperor decides on a trip to the south to check out the country. The higher ranked women are all invited, but Ri asks Hailan to stay behind and take care of the harem and the pregnant consort Shu. The ship convoy is pretty cool. I mean, yeah, a lot of it looks really fake, but I can't help but love seeing them passing through cities, people bowing to them. It's like a nice way to see the absolute grandeur of the royal family. You kind of forget when you're in the palace all the time, but they are so far above the average person. There's work to be done, but they also make time to play. Ri and the emperor sneak off for some normal couple fun. They dress up like commoners, well, like rich commoners, and just stroll around the city enjoying their rare opportunity to relax. There's a really cute scene where a vendor is trying to advertise his food and says that it's so good that even the emperor orders some ship to his palace and they're like, oh, does he? <laughs> they even run into an outdoor get together where they are literally just telling stories about how cool the emperor is. I mean, fair enough, there's not much else to do in this time period, but if I were the emperor, I would start to feel like all of these people were paid actors. <laughs> It's too good. Suspiciously good. With the Emperor spending all of his time with Ri, the Empress Dowager decides to make a point. At dinner one night, she has two of his concubines disguise themselves and put on a show. He doesn't even recognize them as Mei and Noble Lady Ching. Ching hasn't served him in bed in 12 years. This is definitely accurate. The concubines of some emperors could die without seeing the Emperor once. The Empress Dowager isn't mincing words here. Cold but true. She makes it very clear to the Emperor that he has responsibilities to every single woman in the harem and not just his barren Empress. And also, to Ri, making sure the Emperor doesn't spend all of his time with one person is absolutely the responsibility of the Empress. That duty can't be shirked just because that person happens to be you. As usual lately, the Empress Dowager and I are in total agreement. I'm glad she said something. These scenes are sweet and all, but yeah, he does have literally a dozen other women waiting for him as well. Yin Wan also decides to shoot her shot and puts on a show herself. The only reason I love Yin Wan scenes is seeing Yun Che, Li Yu, and Ri's expressions every time she so much as breathes. Despite the Empress Dowager's efforts with Qing and Mei, the Emperor chooses Yen Wan to spend the night with. He also decides to promote her to consort on the spot. <laughs> the other women who became consorts had children or a powerful backing. Yen Wan is not only childless, but no one has forgotten about her humble beginnings. What's really going on here is the Emperor has finally gotten sick of how much the Empress Dowager meddles in his affairs, and he's fighting back. Not only does she send girls to spy on him, even some of his doctors work for her. He's not ready to cut her off completely, but he wants to lessen her hold over him, hence focusing on women he knows have no loyalty to the Empress Dowager. Mei and Qing are both the Empress Dowager's girls, which is why she brought them up, 
So Yen Wan really just got lucky with her timing. And he doesn't stop there. He finds out that his head doctor, Dr. Chi, actually works for his mother. In episode 33, when Hui was dying, she said she knew he was using his head doctor to kill her. Actually, while that was his head doctor, he was under the direction of the Empress Dowager, who if you remember was sick of having Hui around and also wanted revenge for her daughter. The Emperor also starts to suspect that Shu got pregnant because Dr. Chi told her the truth about the contraceptive. It's not true, but the point is, that's what he thinks. So, he has him killed. And it's too bad, too. When Shu Fei was born, the Emperor will be back home. It's like a cop show. Ah, he was only three days away from retirement. Also, I'm sure Ri knows what the Emperor did. Her face says to me, you lying bastard. Yin Wan is really feeling herself after her recent promotion to consort. Her creepy eunuch friend is also feeling her. Gross. Yin Wan goes to greet Ri and the Emperor and coincidentally, the lead astronomer shows up to give them some grave news. I'm sick to death of the astronomy plots. Like, it's so obvious that this is fake. Yin Wan and the astronomer just happen to show up at the same time, and now the astronomer just happens to say Shu's child is bad news, and Yin Wan now just happens to start freaking out and linking other events to it? Come on. Obviously, people were and still are fooled by things like this, but they have gone to such lengths to show the emperor as intelligent and more importantly, hyper suspicious. And yet he swallows their bullshit with no questions. It's never once crossed his mind that someone might be using the astronomers to manipulate him. Today's video is full of me complaining about writing, but seriously, I'm just so frustrated. Especially since the astronomers have literally never once predicted anything useful. In fact, on several occasions, their predictions were totally wrong. Shu is sick back at the palace right now, but it would take all of five seconds to put something in her food. That is not at all proof that what the astronomer is saying is true. So anyway, yeah, obviously, we find out he was paid by Yan Wan to get the Emperor to believe this. Riding her high, Yan Wan doesn't even try to hide her relationship with Yun Che, asking him to congratulate her, asking if he really means it. What are you doing? So reckless. It seems to piss her off that he has so clearly moved on, but like, did you want him pining after you for the rest of his life? Oh, wait, yeah, of course that's what she wanted. <laughs> By the way, I love seeing Yun Cha and also Li Yu getting more and more powerful in their positions. They're such bosses now. Creepy Eunuch takes notice of Yen Wan and how much she clearly still thinks about Yun Cha. Worried about her being compromised, he tells her they must get rid of him. After all, Yun Cha could always confess about their previous relationship, destroying all of their hard work. Yen Wan doesn't want to, but Creepy Eunuch won't be put off. He goes right to work. A few nights later, a servant comes to report that Yun Cha is in trouble. While Zhao was taking a bath, her underwear was discovered missing, and it was later found in Yun Cha's stuff. Yun Cha is being tortured but won't confess, and Jia is begging for his execution. I love the trust when Rui shows up. <laughs> shh, 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 don't say a word, boo. I got this. Rui goes in to find Jia crying about the perverted panty thief and how embarrassed she is. Rui says she feels for her, but there isn't enough evidence to order Yun Cha killed. Then, Yen Wan shows up and supports Ri, telling the emperor that he should think this through. <laughs> Despite Zhao's protests, Ri and Yen Wan convince the emperor to send Yun Cha off to the Mulan hunting grounds instead of killing him. Ri does know the relationship between Yun Cha and Yen Wan, so it's no mystery why she would stand up for him. What puzzles her is who could have been behind the attack in the first place. The next morning, when the creepy eunuch goes to see Yen Wan, it's clear that she has a lot more confidence now and is done following his lead. Not liking the shift in power, the eunuch reminds her that he knows not just about her past relationship, but quite a few of her more recent misdeeds as well. Things don't boil over, but they have less of a tentative partnership now and more of a mutually assured destruction thing going on. I die, you die. Rongpei delivers food and a message to Yun Cha before he is shipped off. Ri will do everything she can to make sure he can come back with his name cleared. As the royal family heads back to the capital, Yun Cha is taken to the hunting grounds in chains. The emperor came into power at a young age and is finally starting to want to be his own man without his mom's interference. The problem is, he can't just say, hey, get another hobby, so he has to stoop to these methods. 
I feel for him, but I mostly feel for the people caught in between. Now that Shu is pregnant, her baby will simply become another pawn between the mother and son. To be fair, there are some instances where I'm glad to have the Empress Dowager's experience, like today's fiasco. Ri really did show a lack of propriety. The other women are people too, and you know that they can't do anything but wait around for him. I hope she did take the Empress Dowager's lesson to heart. And then all of this with Yun Cha. I have to say, this is top-notch drama. I was just at the edge of my seat the whole time and there's so many moving parts with Jia's motivation, Ri's love for Yun Cha, the partnership between Yan Wan and Jin Zhong, not to mention the complicated relationship between Yan Wan and Yun Cha, all coming to a head right at this moment. There's absolutely nothing Yun Cha could have done to prevent or guard against an attack like this and I hate to see him go, but at least he's alive. It also really hurt my heart when Yun Cha was so surprised that Ri would try her best to clear his name. Of course she does, you silly goose. Till we meet again. And now for a look at the book. The only big change here is that Yen Wan is not having any of this wishy-washiness with her feelings. She knows Yun Cha is a danger to her future, and he has shown that he no longer loves her, so she has no qualms about setting him up for stealing Jia's underwear and does not go and see the Emperor to stand up for him. Everything else plays out exactly the same. In fact, I haven't talked about the novel in a while because it's mostly word for word. Just for fun though, here are a few plot points that seem to have been cut out of the drama completely. There's an imperial concubine Jin who I haven't heard brought up in the drama. She's from the same clan as the previous empress and the emperor doesn't want her getting pregnant as he thinks the Fucha clan has more than enough power already. Ri meets her one day and guess what Jin is wearing? The freaking bracelet that the empress used on Hui and Ri. Jin is young and clueless and of course has no idea. Ri is so shocked when she sees it, but of course can't say a word to her. So cold of the emperor to put her in that position when he could have used literally any other piece of jewelry. There's another little plot of Ri's little sister who I think we've seen once. Now that Ri is the empress and she is of marrying age, boys are throwing themselves at her and Ri and her mother are having a hard time choosing, especially as she knows the emperor will be upset if she marries someone too powerful. He hates any kind of possible scheming. I can see why this was cut as it doesn't seem to go anywhere, but it's an interesting look at how every part of her life is affected. And then, while there aren't any other big Yun Cha and Ri scenes, every single scene that they are in together is much more intimate. I mean, literally, but also because you can hear Ri's inner thoughts. Just for example, when the Emperor doubts Ri about the affair and she walks out, in the drama, Yun Cha gives her a sad look. In the book, she walks out, unsteady on her feet, and almost falls. Yun Cha catches her and comforts her, assuring her that it will all work out. She thinks about how looking into his eyes makes her feel comforted, yada yada. So pretty much the same idea, but the drama made every interaction between them much more sanitized, I guess because they didn't really want it to look like these two are in love with each other. Still waiting to see if this will develop into a full-blown affair though. Till next time, thanks for watching.